Hey, what we're about to watch is a deputy sheriff that bashed a guy's skull in so bad that he fractured it. This guy fractured a man's skull. And he was allowed to continue holding a gun in a badge of the state. Try to figure that one out on your own. Just a couple of months ago, another deputy sheriff was arrested and fired for doing the same exact thing. Something this guy's done on multiple occasions. Now, put this into a bigger picture. These are the people that they're sending out to cover up the abuse of children. I've been trying to get the Cobb County Safety uh, Department to go ahead and do an investigation on the abuse happening at the school. Even the National News has reported on this, that their numbers went from reporting of crimes on children from into the hundreds, 900,000, down to almost 10. Go figure that out in a one year period of time. These guys are covering up the abuse of children and they're using the police to help them cover it up. Now mind you here, these are very dirty people. These cops, they don't know the law. They don't know the Constitution. And it actually works to their advantage not to know the law or the Constitution because they could claim ignorance and qualified immunity for it. Go figure. Where else can you get a job where it's beneficial not to know your job. Only the police, the sheriff, the department. And this Huval character? I was unlawfully detained by Sheriff Wright, Deputy Sheriff Wright, in the DA's office. The man put on gloves, wanted to arrest me and beat me down. So I wrote up an internal affairs uh, complaint on him. And over a year later, they still haven't uh, finished it. Over a year for this complaint, and they haven't finished. Did you know, and I'm about to tell you so you will know, the same person that did this investigation on a guy who fractured a man's skull and they just gave him a day off, is the same person investigating, yes, my internal affairs complaint. Huval is his name in Cobb County Internal Affairs Department. So how do you think that complaint is gonna go? If they're, if they're willing to let a deputy sheriff get off for fracturing a man's skull. Come on guys, well watch this. And you'll notice at the end, it gets cut off. Where's the rest of this? I put in for uh, a FOIA for the entire thing. Well, where is it? This gets cut off at the end. What are they trying to hide? But go ahead. Take a look, people. I need likes. I need comments. I need subscriptions. I need to get this information out. Call. Find out why these people are dirty. Ask questions of your government. Redress your government. You're allowed to. They don't like it when you do. But you're allowed to. Was that the same time Chadwick showed up? That yeah, was before Chadwick came out there. I think it, because it was before Rambula. I guess Rambula called Chadwick in the office and said, "I'm sorry, you need help or something." Okay. Because it wasn't broadcast over the radio. It yeah, was the medical call broadcast over the radio at all. Yes, I I called Deputy McNamara on the radio. He was four forty one. Mm -hmm. So can you send a nurse to the infirmary or okay. send an infirmary send a nurse over to our pod? I heard you say that you called him earlier. I just didn't know that you. I called him to the tower. Called no, I called him on the radio. I never, I never left like the five foot area around him until okay. he rolled out. So. Mm -hmm. Was the uh, medical staff pretty prompt in their response? The first nurse got there within a minute or two, but okay, they start working on him as far as first aid at all. They didn't touch him at all. Okay, they went. When the infirmary nurses got there, I think they tried to check his, because he was still in handcuffs, he was handcuffed behind his back, laying mm -hmm. on his stomach. I think they tried to check his vital signs, but they didn't do anything other than that, because they just called an ambulance. Was he actively bleeding at that point, or had the bleeding kind of... He, from what I can tell, he basically, there was the blood from the original, because it was a little bit on the top of the ledge, a little bit underneath the ledge, and like three little drops. 
and he had blood come out of his nose and he had a little puddle like under his nose where he'd been laying there which I think I honestly think that's from him being on when I rolled him over because mm -hmm. I held his head and rolled his body and then grabbed his arm out from underneath him because he wouldn't mm -hmm. give me his arm he grabbed his arm and hand, they handcuffed it but he had a little blood right there and there was a little blood when they, when they finally picked him up he had a little blood patch like on his pocket where it was like a glob had come out of his nose okay and that was pretty much all the blood I mean, it was all contained within about two feet of his head and it wasn't like a if it had time to make a little pool right at the tower was he at the tower for a few seconds before did y'all pull him out from away from the tower when that's that what like we hit i guess i mean i'm trying to trying to visualize it because i haven't really gone back and thought about it but when we went down he went down kind of i guess on his back he hit it and he rolled onto his side and that's when i was on top of him i'm assuming chadwick was right here that's what you remember. Yeah. Being right. Oh, and actually, no, I'm assuming Chadwick went with me because we all kind of just went that way. It was kind of like we were face to face and we kind of went at a 45 degree angle that way, mm -hmm. backwards and kind of over his leg. Like that. She. Where am I? Can you make it out? <laughs> so, is this him? That's him. So, this is him. So, I'm here That's and you. I'm assuming Chadwick is here. Yep. Yeah, so he kind of went like right there and hit, he hit like that bottom ledge. Mm -hmm. I don't, he was laying like that, so I don't know where his left arm is on me. And my head is about here, and my body is across him like this. So I hit him from there. And I'm on my knees, if that makes sense. Yeah. And Chadwick is, I'm assuming, back here. Okay. That's a, I know it's a very horrible drawing, but. I understand. I'm just trying to. <laughs> so this. So the tower, the tower at this point is right here. Okay. Or actually, it's pretty much closer, but it's like right in there. Like his, I think his butt was about touching the wall at that point, or his back was touching the wall. I mean, he was right up against it. All right, stand up for me. I'll be the, the inmate. Where was I? Where was the inmate? He had you here? You know, this, did you still hurt him? No, that's fine. Okay. Like he had, you got to get less of a grip of, okay. it was basically this. Like a pinch? Yeah. Okay. It all went, and he had my shirt all wrapped up. It was a little okay. bit tighter, but. Yeah. So he thought yeah, he had you had your shirt in your, in your arm. And then you had his wrist. I had it here and here. And then you took him down. Yeah, I went, the first one I went like this, and, it pushed up. and it did nothing. Chavik tried to pull was pulling, and we went this way. Okay. Got it just straight down. So, and then he ended up... He, he ended, ended up, I guess he... Think, you I think, think he was still... He was still on holding on to me, because we okay. ended up... I don't want to put you on the ground in your nice clothes. But I ended up like this, on top of him, and his head's basically right here. And I'm sitting there like this, and I'm like, I'm yelling, like, let go of my arm, I hit him like that, and that mm -hmm. was it. Okay, so he you, let were, go. He let go. you were on your side. You were on your knees. Yeah, I was on my knees. It was kind of like maybe, maybe, maybe kind of leaning on him, but mm -hmm. I was right here. And his his head was here. His head is here, and he was on a side ish. Yeah, he was on his side ish. Okay. And the, his, the tower made right here. And he still had you like this. Yeah, he still had me. And he let go after the second time I hit him, and he the second time I remember hitting. Him. And you hit him with the same arm he's holding. This one. Okay. Hit him left handed. Are you left-handed? I am left-handed, yes, sir. Oh, God. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. do you have anything? You said prior before, did you notice any marks on him before, I mean, once you approached him? You said he I didn't hit the door. Yeah, I didn't really, I wasn't really paying attention to his. Okay. I didn't have any, I didn't even know, was it? Was there any, was there any, uh, you said you read a report, did medical see him? From medical saw place? him according to the report, and according to the medical thing, no. According to medical's documents, no, they didn't see him, but the report says Nurse Whiteway cleared him from the night before. But the um, day shift nurse, uh, Annalene Visser, she said mm -hmm. they don't have any documentation on their end. As to him being seen. You're talking about the the fight he had with the other inmate? Correct. Okay. They and head button the door or Yeah, they, 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 there's no documentation in medicals and the whatever their system is that he was seeing there they didn't do any notes on. 
I guess you followed up on that, trying to see if they had it. Oh no, I went down there and they're like, "Look what happened to that man! You look what you did! You, bro, I'm like, I didn't do all that." And you were trying to figure out something that made sense. I yeah. guess. No, I already looked at. I already looked at the report. I'm like, he got in a fight before our little thing. So, well, I guess I'm asking how. As you know, there's no medical records. Did you ask about it? Or did they yeah, I because I, I said, I was like, he got in a fight the night before. She's like, no, we didn't. I was like, yes, he did. There's a report on it. She's like, well, we didn't treat him. I was like, okay. Well, I went and pulled the report. I says, Nurse White Wing treated and cleared him to return to population. Okay. Um, since this incident, um, did you assume you were coming up here? I assume so, because, I mean, generally every time I, almost every use of force I get it, I come up here. Is that true? You know how you use the force reports that you never come? No, I do have some, I said generally. There are some that I don't come up here for, but. And you think it's a majority? I think it's, I mean, it's, it's a good bit, and I was pretty much assumed on this one because there was blood and an injury that I'd be up here. Because he went to the hospital. So. How many times do you recollect coming up here for a use of force issue? Uh, I don't know, several, a couple, four, five, six. You think you've been up here four, f four five, six times? I know, I know for a fact I've been up here at least three. And, I mean, I've, I don't really have a fantastic memory, but, I mean, I've been doing this over nine years, so. Okay. I'm assuming I've been here more times than that. I assumed on this one I'd be coming up here simply because he was, went to the hospital in an ambulance and he had an injury. Yeah, that's the nature of that kind of thing. So I yeah. figured that I, I kind of just assumed that I'd be up here. You think there'd be any other contributing factors for you coming up here? Do you have any theories on that? Not really. Did you make a phone call to Chadwick after you found out this inmate was injured? Yes. I talked to, well, I called Chadwick on his phone and tell him that the report needed to be signed when he came to work the next day. Mm -hmm. Did that conversation go on for a while? Not really. I asked him and said, Said, how many times do you think do you think I hit him? I think I hit him too, it's possibly a third time. He said, I only said I didn't see you hit him, but I heard I heard about three or four mm -hmm. is what he told me. I was like, okay, well that sounds reasonable. I mean it sounds like you were obviously not expecting the injuries that ended up. Correct. That, that, that was that. It was not um the injuries that he has are not consistent with what happened to him during our little Puzzle that we had. Okay. I mean, I'm stronger than I look, but I'm not a superhero. I can't just shatter somebody's face with a 12 inch punch. Like, it's just, I don't have that ability. Okay. You a boxer? No. Fighter? Yes. MMA? Yes. So you don't have that ability at MMA? MMA? I'm not a, generally not a striker, but I'm a ground fighter. Do you think this force was a little excessive? I mean, you broke his face bone. Well, that was not the intent, but now I don't feel what I did was, I don't think what I did was incorrect, but. Well, that's. Uh, I don't think the. I mean, the I, result of it is not proportionate to what, you know. How long have you been an MMA guy? I've been doing mixed martial arts most of my life. Okay. So you say you'd be trained to do something like that? I mean. I'm not, I don't train strength, not, so no. I think that's semantics, man. You, yeah, uh, they you to make a statement, what Pru was trying to say, to make a statement that you're not trained to be able to hit something. You, you, you said you're a ground fighter, right? So most of your ground fights, you're not going to have full range in your punches and all that stuff. But there's I don't. What I guess it's a, a miscommunication. I do jujitsu, which is not striking. Jujitsu and judo, it's not a striking sport. You don't strike. It's submissions and stuff. Okay. Did, Did you, you try, try any of that stuff? Do it. Did you try any locks, wrist lock, any any kind of? No. You think why not? Because we're not trained in that. We're not trained in wrist locks. We're not. We're not trained in anything. Things. We're not trained in anything that could be used in a twelve inch gap while we're on the ground like that. I'm talking about before, like when we were up and standing up. I attempted a takedown, and then we did a takedown. Mm -hmm. And then. The, I'm hearing what you're saying. I'm only having trouble with punching someone because they're holding on to the back of your arm. In the face. 
you had control of him as far as he was now on the ground. You had a partner there to help you with hands. If if you actually had a injury that you would describe to me as extremely painful that he had hold of, that would make sense. You didn't describe it that way. You said it was just right. uncomfortable. Yes. Okay, so um, you did have some other options, but I do understand partially what you're saying. So I'm not trying to make any assumptions, but I am trying to get under your head to, to understand the rapid punches to the face. You remember two. Chadwick remembers three or four, which he told you two. Um, I believe he's being honest. I don't, you know, uh, it wasn't 18. You know, it's not like you were just sitting on top of the guy wailing on him. Uh, there's no allegation that you were irate, screaming, yelling, or anything like that. So just I mean, it's a very unfortunate situation that the injuries resulted in such a serious nature. And, and there may be some reason to explain it. Maybe it's the, the other day, or maybe it's, it's just, maybe it's a medical condition. That's all the stuff we'll look at, okay? It's, it's not all on you, but we want to also know that in a situation you're gonna make a decision that's the most appropriate you can make, punching someone in the face because they've got to hold the back of your elbow when, you, when you're on physically taking them down, you're on top of them. Uh, we just want to make sure you you know you have other options. Correct, man. And looking back at it, there's a million other things I could have done, but that's just not what I did. Was that I, I don't know that I've ever intended to, I mean, I, I come up here and tell you the truth. I tell you what happened, that's what happened. Yeah, and I appreciate that. I don't, can't sugarcoat anything that I did. I mean, I obviously, I mean, I struck him. There's, there's two parts to an administrative investigation. It's, it's determining what happened and also trying to get a feel for the agency and, and what we have here as employees and what, where their mind's at and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just just to sit here and, and find you in the wrong. It's also to know that going forward, we won't have you come back up here for another similar issue because you might use a different tactic the next time or learn from you know the, the hindsight you get to have in this. That's all that I'm saying. So um, I don't want you to make light of the special type of training you have or anything. That's great. That's awesome. But you have to be able to apply resistance and, and yourself and that stuff because training the MMA status is not what what defensive that's tactics we have here. There's a correct. That's why I, I try not to use them. I mean, I'm a defensive tactics instructor too. I try not to use because the. The vast majority of my training, martial arts wise, other than traditional gi and no gi jiu jitsu and judo, mm -hmm. is Marine Corps martial arts, which is kill, maim, destroy, and move on. Mm -hmm. And I do, I mean, that's, I guess that would be my my reference as an adult for fighting, but I don't use that because it's not, I don't believe 90% of it's inappropriate for what I do now anyway. Yeah, and all of because that's not intended to control or restrain in some way. It's intended to destroy somebody and keep going. Right. Because it's a different job. And it's yeah, it involves rifles and everything else. I mean, there's all kinds of other stuff to it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I traditionally try to use. I try to use my mouth. When that fails, I try to. I mean, I have. I've heard a reputation of me that I'm this overly aggressive, violent person, which is completely inaccurate, but. I mean, I don't, if I have to use force, I'm going to use whatever force I need to to get the job done and move on. Like, I don't, I, don't, I can't sit there all day. I can't go home hurt. Like, I have the scar here from an incident a few months ago in January where I got attacked by an inmate in the infirmary who was a need to be a little naked guy, clawed me to death with his fingers, and I mean, I struck him too. Mm -hmm. And you didn't come up here? No. So I, I, that's all I'm trying to say. You, you, you seem, I listened to that phone call that you had with Chadwick, okay? So you seem to have an expectation of what was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I expected to come here with... So what did you expect us to do? I, that's... Well, you said it in there. So... What did I say? You, you expected us to accuse you of attacking someone and... Oh well, yeah, there's no video of it, so of course, that's just how it generally is. There's a video of all the infirmary stuff. That's how I know there's a process to it, so that then there's no video. You you have a different process you have to go through because there's no video. Correct. It's, it's not... So it's not, I expected to be here. Yeah, you should, because that's that's 
the agency's responsibility is to make sure they're holding everything accountable. So what I say is expect to come up here, but expect that people are just doing their job. Don't expect that it's going to be some attack on you because that's what you were. That's what well, you that's really you So that's two, two things. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, do you feel like that today? Part of it, yes. Why is that? That's just that's how it is perceived. That's how I perceive it from time to time. What do you think should happen in these situations? Given this same exact situation, I don't, how I don't, should the sheriff's office handle that? I don't know. This is that's you're, you're trained to do this job, not me. But you don't seem to to. Just because I don't understand, understand it, just because I don't agree or understand, doesn't mean that I'd be better at it than you. I'm not saying that. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking what you expect as an employee, and if you if you understood where where my mind is, because you're right, because it, we're in two different places, um, then you wouldn't feel that way. So if I can help you to understand that, I would love to be able to do that because I don't want anyone to come up here feeling like they're they're going to be attacked. That's what they do. There's no video, therefore I, I'm wrong. That's to me. It sounds so foreign because that's that's the farthest thing from the truth. So, but it, I, I guess that's my perception because that's how I have felt several times. And the alternative to that is to not bring you up here, right? No, it's not not come up here. I mean, I knew I was going to come up here. I was going to have to explain my actions. That's why I wrote, wrote an accurate report. I don't. I don't. Nothing that I did, I can change. I can't change anything that took place. I mean, it is what it is. It was a short incident. It took place. It's over with. Mm -hmm. I didn't get hurt. I got to go home. My nose a little bit sore, and I'm fine. I mean, I had three days off after that. I was good to go. I didn't go to the doctor. I didn't go anywhere. I was perfectly fine. I went home to my wife or to my ex-wife and my kids because I had my kids all weekend. Well, I understand you. Well, Trust me, I've been there too. I've written a use of force report too. I've used use of force. I've come and talked to them afterwards. You know, it's just part of the part of the process. It's not like it's a surprise. Um, I just, I don't. I guess I wish some people understood the process for what it was and not. But it, the, I guess, it, as I guess nobody pers nobody explains the process. The man that might help is that. I mean, I'm not talking about you know training everybody and. You know, maybe because IA is viewed as the bad guy. You're viewed as the bad guy. Yeah, I understand. I mean, that's part of your I job. Like, sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm the bearer of bad news. But um, understanding the process, I understood the process before I was put in this position. It's administrative investigation, which is drilled into us, Gary, and criminal law. It's it's it is trained. You just have to choose to apply what you're learning to common sense. Common sense is the sheriff has to run the agency, and he has to be able to hold people accountable. And the only way to do that is to have a unit that looks into it. And it's uncomfortable sometimes. It's not the best feeling in the world I completely understand. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to take it in as a professional and as part of the deal. It's 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 not an attack on you before you even walk up here. I mean, I, I didn't come in here, you know, ready to fight anybody. I mean, I'm. I understand that. I, I just, I just hate it that that's the way you feel. But that's, I mean, I, I would hate. I would love to tell you that I'm the only one that feels that way. But I mean, I've told people, deputies before. I'm like, just go up there and tell them what happened. I mean, if you thought you were right when you did it, then there's nothing can happen to you. I mean, you did what you thought was right, and that's what you Absolutely. did. No, I appreciate that. No, I don't feel like I don't feel like at all. I, mean, I definitely don't hope you don't think that. That's the way that it's supposed to be. If you're, if you do something. The, because you, if you thought you were right when you did it, then whether you're right or wrong, I mean, you can justify why you did it. If you were wrong, if you knew you were wrong when you did it, then they're telling me I was wrong. Yeah, there's, there's not much coming back from that if you knew. Yeah, I mean, if no. you knew, then you, just, you go up there and tell them you're wrong and you knew you were wrong. But, okay. I mean, I've, I've been in good situations and bad situations, and I don't, I don't believe you were here for the, I mean, I've only been up here a few months. I mean, I, I mean, I have, you know, I have a little bit of, um, I wouldn't call it. I mean, I'm not scared of it, but I have a little bit of bad taste in my mouth from a few times I've been here. If that makes sense. Up here. Yes. Huh. Yes. Up here. Yes, sir. So you mean when you slapped the inmate who was waist chain? 
you got to look at it this way. You're on the street, and a citizen reads this. You're sitting on a, a in a jury in a witness box or testifying. It's basically a push pull match, and the guy's got a broken orbital socket and five staples in his head. I've been served search warrants fighting for my damn life, and I ain't done that much damage to somebody. This is law enforcement, man. So I, I served in the military. I did all that. But you're a sergeant. And you're breaking somebody's damn eye socket off a push pull? Come on, Sarge. And I and I and I don't appreciate that because I investigated your last case where you bitch slapped a dude for grabbing your shirt and he was waist chained. Oh. So the command staff's gonna ask you. In a push-pull contest, you broke this dude's orbital socket, and he's got five staples in his head. And there was basically another deputy there with you. You're a trained MMA fighter. You got all this combat experience. You're a DT instructor. And that's what we come out with in a push-pull, a broken eye socket, and five staples in his head? Yeah, they're damn inmates. Absolutely. But that's the decision we make on a push-pull? Well, that's what's, that's what's going to be asked to you at the disciplinary hearing. Because this, you fucked this dude up on a push-pull. I've been in life and death on the street, just me, and I ain't done that much damage to somebody. That that's, situation's different. That's the point of this. That's what I said. That's what I said. That's, that's, those are the things that I feel attacked on, just like that. Because exactly. you got to be that. You was a disciplinary officer at the jail, right? Yeah. You're sitting over there hearing basically what we're hearing. Correct. And you made decisions on that. That's report. It was a push pull. He didn't. He didn't. I mean, you're not injured at all. You're. And how old is this dude? Fifty-four. Fifty-four and a and a and a drunk coming out of DTs. Do you take charges on him? Disciplinary. Yes. Criminal. No. No criminal charges. There's no. What discipline? What disciplinary charges? Uh, you stick with Res resisting staff and refusing bail order. So you, how, how do you think the public would see that? You slapped a restrained inmate. What would you get for that? Well, I didn't slap a restrained inmate. That's he was waist chained and you bitch slapped him. I did not bitch slap him. That's part of why I feel attacked. I watched the video. What did you get for that? I took, I got eight hours off. Okay. And so, the, and so on paper, this is the same case through the sheriff's office. You. This is, this is actually why I feel attacked. Once this is it. From you, the last time? You're watching it. Okay. All right. Well, I guess, I mean, you're going to have to explain the severity of this. That's all I'm saying. Nobody's attacking. I would expect to get my my butt chewed by the, I mean, you broke the dude's eye socket. I'm aware. I don't believe that I actually did that, but that's, I mean, I mean what, what, what is, what is, is it, it injuries? The what injury? is it that I go to the sheriff with and say, yeah, he got punched in the face three to four times by Sergeant Brennan. He admits to that. But his eye socket got broken in some different way. No, I'm not saying that 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 it got broken. I mean, it's extremely possible that I did that. It was not the intent, and I didn't mean. I'm not. I, I understand, understand that. I don't. I understand you didn't say I'm gonna break this motherfucker's face. I, I get that. I understand it. But you still made the choice to punch the guy in the face multiple times because he had all of your arm. Correct. That's still the, that's still a scenario we have, and feeling attacked on a sustained case that was on video that the sheriff's office has a responsibility to to look at and then now you have another one and you say that you've been up here multiple times, you've been up here three times during use of force cases. And I'm sure if I printed out every use of force by Sergeant Brennan, there'd be way more than three. There's nine pages in ISMS. Okay, that's fine because you work in a jail, you work in a law enforcement setting. We expect use of forces to come up. But if your mindset is, the majority of the time I have to come up here when that's not even actually true or even close to true is concerning. The fact that you can have a sustained case that's on video, then you you feel like that's you being attacked and what is the agency trying to be responsible as an agency? You have to document, you have to hold people accountable, you have to follow up on, on cases like this. And it, it and then of course it'll increase if you have sustained cases. And then you have one where a guy's orbital sockets. Don't be surprised. I feel attacked. Shit, this is what it is. I'm no, not, you know, I'm not surprised by the fact that I'm here. I mean, I'm not. I mean, they told me what his injuries were, and I was like, "Good lord." Were I mean, that's that's a pretty severe injury for what took place. I mean, 
the five staples in his head, I kind of expected when I saw the back of his head from where he hit, the whole facial fractures, I did not expect. Yeah, and that's, that's where the, that's where the, yeah, I mean, that's, that's where the case got opened. Because you do a takedown near a tower, it's to be expected someone might bump their head. That's, that's to be expected. But the, the punches, when you have the guy pinned down by your own body weight and a partner, are hard to explain, and, and the only offer you could give us was that he had a hold of your elbow. I mean, that's, that's what it, that's what took place. There's no. No, I'm not. I'm not can't saying. Make it. I can't I'm make not it. Not saying you should not. say anything else. But at the end of the interview, it, it's the same as as the way you wrote it, which I appreciate. I do, because uh, it's not always the case. So I appreciate that, and just talking it out and making sure that we've got it. Because if there ends up being some explanation. I want to find it. That's my job, okay? From both sides of it. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it. And in the meantime, if I can get someone to understand the whole process so that they're a better employee in the future, I would love to be able to do that, okay? So I hate that you feel attacked. I don't but It's not from you. It honestly is not. So Pruitt, I guess it's the demeanor in which he says things. I, don't, I mean, maybe that's the way it is. Well, I mean, you were in the Marine Corps. Corps. You are in the Marine Corps, right? Correct. I'm sure that there's a there's a reason some people approach things a certain way, maybe to drive and drive home. I have an approach, and he has an approach. And I know you've taken different approaches with different people, mm -hmm. okay? So if I'm telling you, and you're not understanding it, you're respectfully disagreeing with me, maybe a different approach would get you to understand, and then I can come back on it and say, well, see? Because when the agency's looking at it, they're thinking about all the future encounters they're gonna have involving you anytime you're on the stand. Anytime they get a complaint, all this stuff is open records. Everyone has it, and they have their own perception about reading the reports. Okay? So if we can do our best to make sure we're getting all the facts straight and putting down on paper the most accurate depiction of what happened, that's what we want to do. There is a different scenario where we are lackadaisical with it. We play around with your job. We just make decisions based on your report and the testimony of others. We don't do that here. We sit and have uncomfortable conversations and make sure we get it the best we can on paper. So that's what's going on. That's what makes you feel uncomfortable. That's because, nice. because that is the truth. I get it. The way he says it upsets you. I understand that. And, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to be that. I mean, I walked out there and you're eventually going to be on the street one day. And it's like all that open is open records. And you're a sergeant, and you just went to, and I mean, in a push pull. You just gotta understand how they how they look at it, man. I mean, you busted this dude's eye socket. That's some damage. It's it's important, and he's. I'm just I'm because I've, I've been there and had to explain the damage of a person that you did, but I just it doesn't. I think I think the way that I the way that it um, sounds negative to me is that it's always I'm always compared to someone else in a different scenario on a Monday morning quarterback in a situation that wasn't the same that's what why I feel attacked so I'm like you weren't there you didn't do what I did yeah but correct I, you I, may have done something different you may not have well I get that I, get I can't I can't go back and change my actions my actions are what they were whether the sheriff and the command staff feel they were inappropriate is up to them. I did what I needed to do at the time to yeah, finish the incident. We don't want to keep 